Welcome to Mark D. Maker. My name's Mark Taylor, and today we'll be doing part two of this little raccoon. First, let's take a look at the book. I've done a couple carvings out of this book. Here's the author. Really nice book. Has a lot of detail. 12 projects, great value. Um, so here we are. I've done a little bit of work on them since part one. I wanted to make it look younger, so I really took a lot of the wood off. Now this this area in this particular carving is a little chunky through here, and so I wanted to make it look a little younger. So I, I made the arms a little thinner and the paws bigger, kind of like a puppy. You know, puppy's got the big paws. So I went that route. I have a tool here that I made out of a nail. I cut the head off the nail, chucked it up into a drill bit, drilled it right down into the dowel. Um, I didn't have to pre-drill or anything. The nail just drilled pretty much itself right down the center of this uh, filed the end here and used the diamond bit to make a hollow and that is going to be what I press in the eyes with. So I'll put it here, push in and twist it and it'll give me really nice round eyes. I've used this before in several carvings um, and it works really really well. So get started. I'm going to be doing texturing today and I'm going to be using a battery operated Dremel to get that texture in. First the eyes though. All right so what we're going to do is we're going to put pencil marks on the carving where the eye is going to go and the way I do that and this especially and once you build your confidence with this tool, and you can buy store-bought ones of these as well. Um, it seems like I remember Tom Wolf uh, made some um, eye tools at one point in time. I ran the pencil around here, just the side of it, to, to get uh, graphite on here because if you don't get the eyes right um, it just won't look right so look at the picture figure out where you want your eyes and with the graphite on here so this is not permanent you can try to place the eyes you think they should go. So. so I think that that's looking pretty good and it just gives you uh, assurance that when you go to place the eyes you're good because once you push this push this tool in and, and start twisting and you get that rounded eye look um, to redo it you'll have to cut off a lot of wood so this is a nice pre-step I like the way that looks we're gonna go ahead with it So we'll put it there. We're gonna push really hard and give it a twist. Again with this one. But push it in. You can feel the wood kind of crushing and conforming. Now we got some eyes. Now we'll do some work around those, but those are embedded into the wood. I may even take them a little bit deeper 
until the round part of this tool bottoms out and creates a, a shiny surface on there. See, it's got a little bit of a shine. The eyes are inset. And now we can go in with a knife and, and make, do something with the transition here so it's not so sharp. The wood on the outside will, will transition it to the eye so it looks more realistic. Okay, one more thing before we get started. I want to talk a little bit about character turnaround templates. You can get this just to a Google search or, or Pinterest and type in character turnaround template. And this is how you can start to make your own patterns. So if you look at maybe the top of the ear, line comes across the front and the side that's kind of like how you would use this um, you'll be able to see cartoon characters in there like Fred Flintstone or George Jetson or and you'll see how the illustrators used these templates to get the front and the side profile so if you're a beginner and you want to start to make your own patterns this is a great way to start that process now don't be afraid to make lines in between these lines to help line up details like the eyes the nose from the front pattern to the side pattern and and look at uh, what's available on there that that uh, a lot of the illustrators used and you can get a real good understanding on how to make your own patterns both for wood carving sculpture all of it it's a great learning tool you'll learn a lot from it okay now we'll get on with the carving all right here we got the dremel with a white ceramic bit in it I'll go over this piece and we'll talk about this a little bit later. But now I'm going to start texturing. This does get heavy after a while, the big one, battery operated. I'm going to switch off the little cylinder and get some 
real tight places. This is a finger tighten chuck. So just that quick that fits in. And we're off and going again. Last one. Nice deep ones in there with this bigger one. The fur's going to be thicker on the back. So you want the cuts to be a little deeper. Battery ran out. Time to replace it with a new one. All right, while my battery's charging, this is a good opportunity to show you this uh, chuck holder that I'm using. It's a keyless chuck holder. So what I've done is you can buy this from Dremel for about $10 at your local hardware store. It comes with a collet like this. So you have a, a I believe it's a four, four jaw collet. Let's push it on through. And here it is. Yeah, so four jaws on that collet. fits into here and this screws in to the end of this. Well you need a tool to tighten this. So they give you a cheesy little wrench. A lot of people that I know just have a little bigger wrench with a better handle on it that they can grab onto and, and tighten this up. And it'll hold really well. So if you're using like a, a big cutting bit or something like that for a prolonged period of time. Um, I can see the advantage maybe of this. I personally change bits a lot and my bits are on the smaller side. They, they vary and sometimes um, drill bits the size of a needle. So what I do is I use this and it takes care of all sizes. No matter how big, I can put Fordham bits in this or uh, needles in it and it'll chuck up. And just this quick, want to change it? Completely different size shaft, no problem. And these are two completely different size shafts very quick worth looking into all right I went ahead and finished them up stoning the the uh, detail into the fur 
And I'm going to burn in an area that I can't get to with the Dremel. Right in here, right in between the legs here. Um, and I'm just going to use the burner. I have it set on about a three or four. See that mark that I burned in there? I'm just going to go in with a bunch of short little burn lines. Now something that you can do with this burner is the areas around the face and body that are dark. You could actually go in and put the burner on a higher setting and actually burn in the dark color. That would be an added detail that would be pretty nice looking. I've seen people do that with birds. My burning pen is set at about a number four. Burns pretty quickly. I'm going to turn my burner off a little bit and right in between these toes. I changed the orientation of this foot to sideways. So this is the bottom of the foot and I'll, I'll paint that in. This is going to be like the, the pad of his foot. Using the side of the burner to create the flat of the nose here. Nose has dimension so it comes back a little bit. go over the eyes just to take the fuzz off of it.
Now this eye, this eye here, the wood split, and and uh, half of the the uh, conca uh, convex of that wood fell off. It it split. So when I'm painting it, I'm going to have to uh, use surface tension as my friend to get that bolt back. I'll use, I could use paint, I could use some sort of a glue, I could use a, an epoxy. Uh, I'll start off with paint with a drop and uh, let the surface tension hold it in place and see if I can gain back that shape just with paint. So you can see how with the burning pen you can actually achieve your darker colors with this. It's a very natural look to, to burn in the darks of the fur with the burning pen. And I've seen people leave it like that and it actually looks really nice, looks good. Um, then you can add uh, color on top of that and you can see down through the color and this dark will shine through especially acrylics I think we're gonna go with acrylics um, I'm not exactly sure I'm gonna paint it we'll see when we get there all painted with Bruno in the background. Please like, share, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.